Well, Thursday. I guess we can start again. Well, let's see. Chair Yavis, would you like me to take roll call to see if everybody's back from lunch? Yes, please. Okay, I will. Uh, I will conduct a roll call. If you can ask it here, that'd be great. Um, Carolyn Ballard. Here. Thank you. David Calloway. Here. Vice Chair Dudley. Vice Chair Dudley. You here yet? Here. Thank you. Joan Freeman. Here. Thank you. Wendy Miller. Here. Thank you. Kristen Taylor. Here. Thank you. Nathan Williams. Here. Thank you. We do have chair and we have chair Yavis. Thank you. We do have quorum. Thank you. Next item is the development of the 2021 Section 53 cent priority, priority listing for the Phoenix Mesa UCA. The committee is tasked on developing the priority listing to guide the funding awards. The committee will now have an opportunity to debrief on the interviews and that have taken place so far. Please remember to keep comments to what has been presented by the applicants. Thank you. Are there any comments on the presentations, the interviews? I have no comments. I thought it all went well, Joan Freeman. This is Wendy Miller. Um, is it, I, I, I think they all went well. I, I, you know, only one that I have a concern with, but um, is it possible for us to see what the scoring wound up if we're not having too much discussion about the individual um, interviews. You just want the scores for the interviews or you want the whole scores for all of them? You know, I mean, the all the category, sorry. Chair Dudley, uh, Chair, excuse me, Chair Yavis, uh, I can um, provide a, a review, um, an overview of the evaluation process and present the scores. Okay. Okay, thank you, Chair and members of the committee. First, I would like to start off to thank the committee for uh, providing our 5310 applicants um, the, the opportunity to provide um, an interview and present to you. As you've um, heard that many of the nonprofit agencies are really working tirelessly to provide those services to our community members through this difficult time. Um, and it, it just shows the value of the work that you provide here and the importance of this program. To review, there, are, there were 42 project requests that are up for discussion 32 um, are for the traditional 5310, uh, are for the 5310 program, and 12 are for the CRISA slash American Rescue Plan uh, portions. Estimated funding under 5310 is approximately 3.5 million. Um, we've had $3.4 million in federal request. After years of refining this process, the committee had, had developed the following parameters. Agencies can request up to five vehicles. Um, agencies not meeting the seven uh, point uh, evaluation scores 
did not move forward in the process. And the 5310 operating type projects, um, the methodology of, of, a, um, of the pride of the city is to do a first round increment of 125 and then a percentage based on where they are ranking into funding is expended. Just a reminder that federally we are required to award 55% on capital request. This is not required under the CRISA or American Rescue Plan. I would like to thank Ezekias for consolidating and coordinating the, the ranking and the scorings. Ezekias, can you please pull up the scorings first for the traditional um, section 310? Yes, um, let me just resume my share. Um, let me know if everybody can see it. Okay, could you scroll down to where the cutoff would be at the 70%? Um, uh, on this, everybody but this agency were able to meet the 70%. Yes, every can scroll down. Oh, you bottom. can see it? I can see oh, it. Oh, sorry. I can't scroll. All right. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, thank you. Has um, Wendy had um, has I have noted before, and Wendy kind of mentioned we do after the evaluation of the applications and after the scoring and the interview process, there is only one agency that has fallen below the seventy percent to move forward for awarding. Um, we are, um, is there any discussion regarding this? My glasses, where are my glasses? So Pearl didn't make it. Yes. Okay. Through consolidating the scores and the evaluations um, for all transit, with their uh, exceeding ADA services application request did not make the 70 point cutoff to move forward for awarding. Chair, this is uh, Vice Chair Dudley. I, I, I think maybe one of the things that, um, at least to me, what kind of took Pearl Transit down maybe just a little bit was the when they really focused on this, this was more of a seed money type of thing that really um, gives me some hesitancy in terms of whether or not the viability of this particular project actually can become a reality. I, I mean, I think it'd be maybe a little different if they were already here in the Valley, but having, you know, their, their comment regarding that this is that they need the funding more is, you know, for, for seed funding. I think really kind of um, gave me some hesitancy there. Thank you, Vice Chair Dolly. Any other comments from the committee? I just had one question on how they scored, how you guys scored Valley Metro um, on, sorry, I don't have it open. When you guys looked at the different applications, what you guys were looking at to give them different scores for their, sorry, have open. I just want to understand um, the Valley Metro. So your scores on the match the, to operate and maintain, how did you come up with East travel trailing at five, East Valley at nine and West Valley at four? I can speak to that nine. In reality, um, this was a mistake on my part. It's supposed to be a four and I have corrected it on these consolidated scores. So they also have a four in there. But for okay. the to the content of the scores themselves, that is something that Wendy can talk about. Well, that, that I don't even need explanation of. I mean, as long as they're, I just was not understanding the nine versus the four. So I'm- Oh, okay. Yeah, so it was just a um, when the city of Phoenix sent it over their scores as the um, designated recipient to to Mag, there was a confusion on the 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 trans translation of the document from one to another when it was sent to 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 committee members, but that has been fixed for all of the scores and they are according to what the city of Phoenix has scored. Okay, thank you. 
what Hezekiah is so kindly stating is that I did it on a 10 point scale when it should have been a five point scale. So it got messed up. So it was an accident, but it's been fixed. <laughs> Thank you for the clarification. I meant to ask it earlier, so thank you. So thank, um, thank you, Chair and members of the committee before we move forward to evaluate um, the scores and where they, where they lie. Um, are there any other questions regarding the Pearl? I, I had a quick question, this is Nate. Um, I, I appreciate, on the Pearl Transit thing, I appreciate what uh, Vice Chair said on that. I found that to be the most interesting one of all, so it's interesting to see where it ranked because it is kind of a projection. Um, so I was interested to see where everyone came out on that. Um, I don't know whether we need to, like, I'm just interested in kind of the concept of how a, how we feel that, because I feel like a feeder system is a great idea. Um, you know, everyone kind of does their, their bits and pieces. Some are over the whole region, some aren't, but um, I like the idea of a feeder system. I don't know how they would execute that. I think that's the question mark is like, you know, how, how are you going to fill in all the gaps, identify and fill in all the gaps, like they were saying, but I'm just interested in a discussion on how do we get, if someone is new, what's the right way to go about starting them starting out so they can get going and us to project that the, they will, they will work, you know, versus like, we don't want them to fail. We want to, we don't want to give them money and then they, they fail, but how do they get started if, if we, you know, I'm just I'm interested more in a, a little bit more in, in that discussion. Like, uh, Mr. Dudley was saying, you know, because I, I go back and I was kind of oscillated on that myself. Chair, Thank this you. is Wendy. Can I comment? Is that, is that a yes, yes. Chair? Yes. <laughs> you, you never find the, the button when you want them. Oh, sorry. I just try to be respectful. Um, so there was a large list. I mean, I, I don't think that there's any problem with having new services and, you know, when Didi and I, you know, uh, did our technical workshop and everything, you know, the general idea is there. I think that it, you know, the scoring reflects the actual execution and the commitment to this region and the knowledge of this region and how it works it you know some of the stuff seemed almost too good to be true and the questions that were asked you know they did not submit those timely but the answers were not thorough and didn't really give us the what we were looking for to find that so I, you know i think they were given an ample opportunity to to shore up and give us the information that we needed in order to say yes but i don't think that the application was very successful. Some of the concerns, you know, revolved around, you know, the vehicles that they mentioned um, in their inventory. Were those, you know, currently here, or were those other places? Were they those the vehicles they were going to use, utilize in the system? They couldn't answer that. They talk about some people using their own vehicles, but them also having vehicles, and they weren't very clear on, you know, the knowledge of how many ADA vehicles they would need. Some of the questions on you're asking for positions of eight drivers, um, but what about, you know, if you're doing covering the entire area 24 seven, is eight drivers enough to be successful? I'm just not confident that for this service that that they did their due diligence in providing all the details it was kind of like yeah well if you give us this money then we'll come and figure it all out it just didn't seem as solid as you know i know they've been successful in other regions you know i think we all know as members of this region how complicated our transit can be and i was a little bit concerned that we didn't get the sense that they really understood the needs of our region and how it set up. And they talked about creating a database where the database, uh, you know, they said they were going to avoid duplication, but they were pretty much creating a database that's already handled by Valley Metro and an inventory that's done by MAG, but they didn't mention any type of coordination when we kept asking them about coordination with you know, those agencies to get that information, 
there was nothing about reaching out, holding meetings, getting more information. Um, so, you know, there was a long list of concerns for me and on the execution of the actual application and the answers to their questions. However, if there was, you know, a commitment to come and, you know, it, they, I know they have to come up with a lot more resources than $150,000 that they're requesting, but they didn't seem committed to doing that on the front end and then you know, applying after they've been coordinating in the area and kind of like proof of concept in our region showing us, um, you know, that it was going to potentially be a successful project. And it was kind of a little bit of a roll the dice with a, you know, federal funds when there really wasn't a good solid foundation. So th those are some of my concerns. And I think why m m at least my individual scoring as a committee member, you know, reflected that. Thank you, Wendy, Chair, and members of the committee, if I can follow up. Um, I just wanted to, um, we did have, Phoenix and Mac did have a one-on-one -on -one technical review of the application, and we did provide those suggestions to connect with other um, transit services in the region. Um, also, it precedents for this program, the committee has made the decision, determination, um, not to not to move forward with agencies that have um, that did not have existing services in the region, and this could be due to uncertainty of the services, you know, sustainability of the services, making sure we are expending federal funds. Um, so uh, we did have some concerns regarding uh, awarding federal funds to an agency not yet established. Uh, for other nonprofit agencies, you know, um, if they did not um, make the cutoff, uh, and Max Staff will also do with this agency, we will always provide su support after the program. Um, we definitely, um, uh, Ms. Williams has denoted that, you know, new agencies is really a, um, is an important um, feature for our, our community members and we definitely want to and support any services that will provide, you know, services to the unserved. Thank you. Thank you both. Appreciate the responses. So chairs, members of the committee, if there's not any more um, comments on this. Um, so with the consensus of the committee would be to not move forward with Pearl due to not meeting the 70% point cutoff. Is there any questions about what, what, what Didi said? <laughs> no, I think what Wendy and Didi both said make perfect sense. So I'm, uh, I'm fine moving on. Um, without them, given that they are not above the 70% threshold level. Me as well. Agreed. Do we need to vote on it or what do Well, if that's a consensus, we can move forward with the, we're looking forward, uh, looking at the, the rankings and scorings for the First of all, due to the traditional 50, uh, 55 capital um, projects. Can we, uh, Chair, uh, can we sort oh. them by um, capital and then operating below? Is it possible to sort by capital projects and that you know that would meet the 55 percent and then it then in score order secondary sort sure, right, now I, right now i can't what i can do is that once we're talking about just the capital i can remove all the operating and we look only at the capital and then i can do the same thing when we look at the operating chairs members of the committee yeah um, as a case if you can do that um we can move forward and talk about the traditional capital requests. 
And again, it is a vote requirement to meet the 55%. As I noted previously, um, this is where the ranking lies. We do have Challenge Over Arc, um, the Center for Habilitations to request um, STARS to request UCP, um, the attitudes after that, Bohan's Caring Corps, Alpers, Benavia, Valley Metro, I mean Valley Life, excuse me, Independence Plus, SL, the Opportunity Tree, Alpers, SL Preventive Maintenance, the other SL was for the vehicles, One Step Beyond Vehicles, Northwest Valley Connect Preventive Maintenance, One Step Beyond Preventive Maintenance, SAVI, the Southern Arizona for the Vision Impaired Vehicles, Justice Center Vehicles, Hacienda Healthcare Preventive Maintenance, and the Center of Arizona Council of Development with Disabilities with Vehicles. Had I noted previously, um, we do have, we may be below under our 55% allocation for capital request. As, um, So uh, we have about 123,558 below what we are required to expand for capital, um, 55%. Uh, we did mention this at the last meeting previously. Um, we, we did let um, the committee know that now again, the city of Phoenix would um, review the request and the funding amounts and that and the city of Phoenix would look at other, other projects that we could possibly fund other eligible projects that have been submitted to be funded under the capital request to kind of close up that sh shortfall of um, what we're required to spend. So I'd like to um, hand this over to the city of Phoenix um, to provide some information regarding that. Chair, thank you, Didi. Um, so the first thing I wanted to point out is that because we have this shortfall, the one thing that we uh, looked at when determining the funding levels was that I don't recall if we reminded you, but all of the 5310 projects have the ability to be funded at 100% this year. So what we've done to try to rectify that and meet our 55% is that we have um, made the determination that all of the capital projects can be funded at 100%. Um, and even at that rate, we still don't meet our 55%. But not to worry, um, we would just probably roll over uh, that requirement to next year. So we would have to meet our 55% um, from this year first and fund out of those funds first. And then on top of that next year, do our 55%. So our hope is, is that through making sure that, you know, we've done our due diligence at advertising the program, making sure people understand, you know, the benefits of preventive maintenance, you know, things like that. If there's not a need for that many vehicles, that's fine. But we just want to make sure that, you know, we're spending down these funds as quickly as possible. And, but it's not a concern this year that we're not meeting our 55. We will definitely, you know, close that gap next year. Um, and we are looking into other, one of the other things we were looking at is potentially um, adding on extended warranties. That is an eligible request. Um, since we didn't include it at the beginning this year, it kind of complicates things to add that on. Um, but we didn't have the, the actual amount of what the extended warranties would cost. And we have to do kind of a cost benefit analysis to make sure that it would be worthwhile. And we had one of our mobility managers helping us with some numbers on their fleet that could show, you know, that could help us make that determination. So what we're looking at here is on the capital side, funding and score order, everybody would get funding at 100% and there would still be room for the 55%. So 
that would be kind of held to our, what our, what we had mentioned our standard was, was about a 60% level since all of the vehicles in here have estimated amounts. And those agencies, um, usually when they do their final order, the orders are a tad less than the actual estimated cost. We put a little bit of a buffer amount in there so that they can order options and things that they need on the vehicles. But some people spend it all, some people don't, some people are being a little bit more conservative if their budgets are tight, um, et cetera. So we always have some savings. So what we're proposing here in the 55% category or, or trying to meet that is we would fund everything that's here at 100% and then we would put a placeholder in there for next year for filling in the remainder of the 55% with uh, capital projects from next year's round. And I'm gonna stop there before I go any further and, and see if the committee has questions or if they need clarification on that or if I explained it okay. Chair, this is Vice Chair. So Wendy, so it, everything we're looking at this screen, so those 34 projects are gonna be at a 100% match. So vehicles, prevent and maintenance, anything that's on there, or is that just the vehicles that are going to be at 100% match? Everything on there is eligible for 100% match. So mobility managers, uh, preventive maintenance, and vehicles would all be at 100%. Okay. And then the remaining 123,558, we're going to roll over to next year, and then we'll hit that money first on the next year's rankings, and then roll into the new 55%. It, it would actually be higher than the 123 um, because um, of the 60% threshold. So we would estimate about a 60% um, award would net us a 55% goal after the vehicles are purchased, if that makes sense. So we would put a placeholder in that 123,000 is 55%. We would add another 5% onto that as a placeholder to make sure we awarded more than 55%. So when the actual cost of the vehicles come in, we've met the 55. Because if we just went to the 55 and then the vehicle costs were less and we had project savings, then we would dip below the 55. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that makes okay. sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And on the extended warranty, this year's applications are not considered eligible for adding the extended warranty. Is that, did I miss that completely? Not, not, Chair, not, not necessarily. Okay. Um, what we were doing was trying to figure out a way if we could meet the 55% by maybe adding on some additional options and maybe asking the committee if they were okay with us awarding higher than the estimated amount originally in the application so that we had the opportunity of adding on extended warranties and spending that funding down. I don't, I'm not positive yet. I'm still working on this project. So I don't know for sure whether or not we can do it. It's not gonna be an issue if we do it or if we can do it. So what, what the committee could do potentially is allow MAG and Phoenix to move forward when we do get the final awards and the priority listing you know, adopted and we put you know, the money to the projects that if you so chose to say, if you have the ability to add those in and reduce the amount of the shortfall of the 55% that you would allow us to maybe exceed the current estimate to allow people to purchase extended warranties if they want to. I'm just saying that I'm not positive I can make that happen for this year, but either way we will still make it happen for next year and or um, ensure through next year's process, either way that we meet that 55%. Thank you. Chair, if I may, and members of the committee. Um, every year we, we kind of run into the same um, kind of process and that is why the motion 
is to approve the priority listing. And as Wendy has said, MAG and the city of Phoenix and preparing for the TIP and ensuring that we pass it through um, the committee process is that the vehicles are always a moving target. Until we place a procurement and we know the amount of purchase, um, that the amounts may, may, um, may differ a little bit. We may have more, we may have less. And so uh, this is a process that we've gone through um, throughout this whole program. Thank you, Didi. And I would also add that, you know, for really what we're trying to do is make sure that everything that we're suggesting to try to make sure we spend these funds expeditiously is just the transparency piece. We just want to make sure that everybody's aware of, you know, the challenges that we're facing with CRISA, ARP, mm -hmm. this, it's a lot this year. And we're trying to make sure, and, and because of COVID, it really reduced the amount of vehicles that people were requesting. Um, and because they used their vehicles some use their vehicles less some used them just as much but we did see a, a, a decline in that and because they didn't run their service as much they weren't having to maintain their vehicles as much so the request for preventive maintenance was slightly down because they had leftover funding from last year so and their request was only to meet you know, the shortfall difference between the two years. So we're just trying to, you know, be transparent on what we're trying to accomplish and how we're trying to go about doing it. And so, you know, just wanted the committee to understand it and, and be okay with it in general. Chair, members of the committee, are there any other questions regarding the traditional um, side of of the program that we, we would move forward um, with the final rankings, uh, uh, move forward um, with the priority listing based on the rankings um, and that we would um, roll over and add a placeholder for next year is not any shortfall to get us to the 55% and that we will move forward with 100% awarding for tra traditional capital. Are there any other comments? Are there any additional comments on the summary of committee of consensus? Can somebody make a motion based on the um, summary? What, a little early? Yes, Chair Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Chair Yabas, um, <laughs> this is just a committee consensus to move forward, um, but I will state the motion at the end. Can you? On, on, the, on the consensus, the, uh, the extended warranty, is that part of the motion? Uh, maybe it should be, if it's possible, right, Wendy? Um, I'm not sure if we need a motion for it. I think that, you know, Dee Dee's comment was, is that, you know, there's a range of amounts and we just wanted to be transparent with what our plans were. Um, so, you know, the actual money to the projects is is a little bit outside of the committee's purview, but we just, like I said, wanted to be transparent. So I don't, Dee, you, you tell me if you think it should be at least in the motion, or you could at least note that you had consensus for it. That doesn't mean it has to be included in the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy, Chair and members of the committee. Yes, this is for committee's consensus to move forward. Um, definitely, um, and as I noted, um, MAG and the City of Phoenix, we always review uh, the wording amounts, but the motion for this agenda item is to move forward with the priority listing that will be utilized in the, the wording of section 5010 funds. So that is the action items for this agenda item. Uh, this discussion is to, as Wendy has said, just to show transparency and how we develop the, the um, priority listing and to answer any uh, committee members' comments. Can you repeat that? I'm yeah. having, God, I'm having issues with my hearing. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. This okay. item so far is for discussion and information. The, the action item for this 
agenda for the priority listing is to um, is to develop the priority listing to move forward through the committee process to be utilized during the awarding of funds for the Section 53 plan and the President um, and American Rescue Plan. So the action item is the motion to approve the priority listing has developed by the committee. This portion is just information and discussion so that we can answer any questions regarding the development of the priority listing. And these are consensus items, not actually for motion by the committee. So before Chair Didi, this is Wendy. Um, before we move on, I think that it would be helpful just to say that the committee has consensus on the, the capital funding in the score order that it's in and that everybody's funded at 100% and also consensus if anybody has any issue um, on the uh, adding the extended warranties. It won't be part of the total motion, but at least we know we have consensus. I'm in. Thank you. Count me in too. I agree. This is David, I agree as well. This is Nate, that sounds fine. Carolyn, I agree. Thank I you. mean, <laughs> so did we miss anybody? No? I would like, um, Chair, members of the committee, I would let, now um, next like to review the operating portion of the Section 5310. And it's the case we can pull that up. So the total allocation um, available um, for the operating side of the program, and this um, does not include the 55% that is federally required. We've already um, removed that and the 10% administration um, for, for the program. So it's a, a, a remainder of about between 30, um, actually, the committee had um, suggested a 60%. So this is about the, um, 30, 35%. And based on the ranks and the consolidation of the scores uh, for operating, we do have the City of Phoenix uh, Public Transit Alternatives Program. Uh, first, second is the Valley Metro Access Accessibility Improvement, um, Valley Metro's Transportation Alternatives, East Valley Right Choice, Valley Metro's West Valley Right Choice Program. Next, we have Foothills Caring Corps Volunteer Program, Northwest Valley Connects Volunteer Program, and Wyopis Volunteers Program. And again, Pearl Transit will not move forward due to um, not making the 70, uh, 70 point cutoff. Um, the committee had requested at the last meeting, uh, since this is a new apportionment um, funding available to the program, that we look at uh, funding scenarios for this. Um, I would also like to um, say that not only is, oh, oh no, sorry, I jumped ahead. That's for Krisa. <laughs> <laughs> we have already, uh, the committee at the previous meeting um, had approved the method of awarding. So um, if you can show um, the funding amount. So the committee, had um, approved that for capital request um, regarding the funding and that we do, would do a 125 um, pass through and that the remaining funding would be based on the percentage of where they rank until funding is expended. As a key is, can you provide that information? Yeah, so according to the last um, discussion on this um, topic on uh, providing the on on Mar provided on March, um, uh, the committee decided to do a first pass of one hundred twenty five thousand 
times the scores uh, for each one of the applicants um, until the, the amount is expended. And if it's not expended, then a second pass of the remaining amounts times the score. Um, as you can see here, I also have the formula in there if you want to check. Um, I have here the score in this case it would be 125,000 passes times the average Excuse of the me, points. Excuse me, Ezekiel. Yes. I'm sorry, we can't see the full Oh, you can't? No. Oh, sorry. I guess I didn't do this. Now you can, right? No. No. I can see it. It's just mm -hmm. the operating. There, there's only, there's a, yeah, there's only the seven of them. Amounts. Yeah, it's just the operating right now. I, I excluded the capital, so we, we can see just the okay. operating part. Okay. Um, uh, so as you can see in here, uh, all the requests that are above 125,000 receive that, that, that calculation of the 125,000 passes. The ones that are below are getting their amount request times their scores. And then with the amount uh, remaining available, we do a second pass with the remaining of the remainders of the requests until all capital, uh, until all uh, funding available is uh, apportioned, which will end with the Valley Metro East Valley right choice. Chair, so yes, yes. When we voted on this, it was a long time ago. I'm just gonna <laughs> ask because I don't remember. Are we sure that we did the amount times their score below, if they were requested below 125? Um, I can confirm that with you on the, our minutes, but um, the process would be the same for all of them. If it's 25,000 or if it's below, um, the, 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 the method wouldn't change. So what I thought I understood you to say, for instance, Foothills Caring Corps asked for $42,053. If you took um, 125,000 times 87%, would that not fully fund Foothills Caring Corps? Um, uh, from uh, what we had talked um, uh, on the meeting on March, it was that for 125 or the full amount times the score, whichever comes first. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. I just, I just wanted to re refresh my memory. It's, it's fine the way it is. I, I just curious. Yeah. So it was whichever comes first. Uh, so in the case for these three last ones, um, because they are not at hundred above one hundred twenty-five, then w w what comes first is the amount request times the score. So, so has a Kia. So for, let's look at foot health clearing course. So that would be. 42,053, 87.5% of that number equates to yes. 36,796. Exactly. Okay. And the same goes for Northwest Valley Connect. The 7,000 is 83% of 9,354 and so on. And then explain how we, okay, so that'd be the first run. And then the second run is the remaining amount, just, you know, thank goodness, City of Phoenix has 500,000, makes it a little easier. So that mm -hmm. 118,750 is 125,000 times 95. 95%. So those, those first couple ones um, are all that, 125,000. Exactly. Okay. All this four first. Mm -hmm. They are not the amount that they requested times they scored. Yep. They are 125,000 times. They times scored. the percentage. And that gets those particular numbers. Yes. Okay. And then now explain the second pass and how that works. So the second pass would be the remaining amount. So 500,000 minus 118,000 would give an amount um, of 300 and something times again, the 95%. So whatever is left that they still need to get 
the um, apportioned times the score gives this number and so on. Correct. So, so sorry. Go so ahead. Surprise. I just wanted to, I mean, I, I get the funding point, but if you look at the, I, I am a West Valley city, but if you look at the West Valley ride choice, being it's less than a percent or 1% or one point average. And they're, you know, they're getting less than half of what they asked for. So it just, it doesn't sit well with me when you look at that and how, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything that can be done, but they're less than one point away from East Valley Ride Choice if they're only getting, you know, half of their funding. So I just had to make that point. No, that's that, that's correct, Kristen. I mean, I don't want to go back and change um, the history, but like, would that like that second pass be the remaining at one hundred twenty-five thousand dollar interval? But I think. I think we had a discussion on that in March, but I'm trying to remember if that was the case. Chair, members of the committee, yes, that was a discussion at the previous meeting. Um, the committee did say that um, that it was a preference to ensure that this course, because you do spend a lot of time on the evaluation and you have those scores have meaning. So this was a process to ensure that all of those that meet the 70% are awarded some federal funds um, and that this was the most equitable that we could um, come about that includes the ranking. And again, um, the amount of funding that we have, um, the amount of the request far exceeds the amount that we have a portion um, for this um, for this group of funding. So I get it. I, I understand we talked about it. It just doesn't look right. It just doesn't sit well with me. So I just wanted to make that. Just want to make it public note. <laughs> it just doesn't look right. Chair Didi, this is Wendy. I know it. It, it seems every single year. It, you know, the unintended consequences of the formulas that we choose, there's always something that, you know, the cutoff somehow doesn't, you know, work out exactly, you know, if we were just to pick and choose and, and you know, do it differently, but I, I, don't, I don't know how else to do it. <laughs> We work so hard on those. Um, so yeah, I, I'm with you though. I do understand. Are there any other comments from the committee? Yeah. Can you, so Phoenix will get one eight one one eight seven fifty plus three six seven one six eight. Is that correct or? Am yes, reading... that's correct. Do you want me to show the totals? Yes, please. Yeah, can you add one column? There we have it. Are there any so when we were originally discussing this, it looked so equitable. <laughs> Uh, Chair, members of the committee, and it's also, um, as the committee had noted at the previous time, is also the amount of the requests. Um, they're not, it's going to be different. Not all of the requests are same. You know, we do have a large jump between um, the first half of the request was in the hundred thousands to the next, which is um, below 50,000. 
chair, Dee Dee, this is Wendy. The other, the other thing that I remember and why we kind of did it this way, if you'll remember in the past, the West Valley and East Valley Royd Choice used to be one application. And since we were, uh, had voted also on excluding people from voting on things in their area, we split that out to try to make it easier for people to, you know, recuse themselves and not stay out of the whole, you know, scoring process. So that's kind of another unintended consequence is having Valley Metro split that project out. It would probably be rated differently if they were submitted together. So that is also a, a change which makes that different. Yeah, that I was, that, I mean, how can one, one right choice score higher than the other right choice. They're doing the same exact thing, whether it's East Valley or West Valley. Great, great question. I think we'd have to go back and look at the scores to make sure, I mean, I, I don't Chair think members. I scored them any differently, so. Well, and I members both my scores, but I scored them exactly the same as well. Chair members of the committee, I think also um, into consideration of that they are two separate. Um, they do serve, uh, they're not a, a regional, um, it's not a regional program. They do serve separate um, cities. And I think part of that evaluation, evaluation and this is just my, um, guessing is that um, looking at the, at the cities that they serve, the population that they serve, and the density all kind of comes into play in the evaluation of those two programs. Hey, this is uh, this is Nate. Um, I'm, I was looking at that too because I'm looking at my uh, I'm a bit of a lay person at this, but I'm looking at my score sheet and I see like, oh yeah, they're, they're score different. Why is that? And under section five match op, operate slash maintain, you got five for travel training. You got nine for East Valley ride choice and you got four for West Valley ride choice. Did, I know we corrected that, but or it sounds like we corrected that, but did there we, shouldn't we, be that big of a difference. The nine right. might be an error. So I'm just looking at the base score sheet, right? That we all put our own individual scores in. And like, I thought I heard, you know, everyone say earlier, like a, and Kristen asked about it, that, oh, why was that before? And I, th I thought that got answered, but Anyway, when I see this, it makes me like, it made me like wonder like, what well, did I score them different? And, but I didn't, you know, I gave them all the exact same score because it's all the same kind of entity to me, but that's my personal thing. But anyway, I just want to bring that up and make sure it got corrected because that had an impact. I think that the um, difference might be significantly greater if there was that many points difference. I mean, like Kristen had mentioned, it's only a, very small percentage difference so right it would yeah i agree because that's five points or yeah five point difference and it's only a one point difference on this so obviously it's individual scores that i guess makes the difference and why i, I don't remember why did we make them you know um separate the two i I'm, I'm a beneficiary of this, this, you know, grant application. So of course I'm going to fight for it, but I just don't understand. I don't know what the background was for splitting these two applications. You're muted. Thank you, chair members of the committee. Um, these are, uh, are not true applications, uh, a true um, regional application, excuse me. Um, and when it comes to reimbursing, there was, um, there was discussion on how much of the funding would go to the East Valley um, stakeholders and how much is going to the West Valley and the costs incurred in, in that. 
Um, so uh, it was a choice to make these two applications separate because they do serve certain cities in the East Valley. They do serve certain um, cities in the West Valley. But their cost is different, has and noted in the request. And it was a cleaner kind of reimbursement so that we could show um, when we do the uh, we do the reimbursement on the federal level where those costs were incurred and, and how it was done. One last question, and this is related to the um, the, can you scroll down to the bottom, please? Where exactly? Oh, I see it. Oh, okay. So the remaining available, the 123,558, that's the leftover from the capital. Is that 1953,107 in the total available? Is that the 55% or the 60%? Um, this is the, so this 1.953 is the 55%. So is the 1242886 total 35%? Yeah, it's 35. So it, what everybody's getting should actually be 5% less than because we should be, um, making the total available 60%. Okay, let me make that I mean, change. I, I, I know that's our intention. So, and we talked about it and had consensus on it. So I just don't want there to be any surprises when we go to do that and we put that placeholder in there and then the applicants on the operating side get even less. So I just wanna make sure we're transparent on that now. All right, let me make those changes then. Thank you. All right, so this is how it looks with the changes. Thank you. I, it's not a drastic difference, but it's enough that I just wanted to make sure that people were aware that it wasn't gonna be as much as was showing on the screen. Chair, members of the committee, are there any other questions or comments? Chair, this is Vice Chair. Hezekias, can you just, um, I know you've already done it, but when you when you go back and look at that, that nine and four thing, could you just kind of make sure that all those numbers were the correct right. numbers? I know yep. when- um, look. Like, uh, I'm gonna address like Kristen's question kind of, I, cause I, I think I had East Valley ride choice one point higher than West Valley ride choice. And um, mine was more towards, cause I know there, there are different rules and it depends, it goes um, between the different cities. I, if I can recall correctly, I think um, like for instance, I think it's Tempe, Fountain Hills, Chandler and Surprise, I think allow the ADA paratransit and the seniors over 65. But I, and I think the other part of ride choice is um, for some of the other cities, I think it's the Avondales, the Goodyears, the Tollisons of the world, might even be Mason's Cost. They only allow, I think, the ADA paratransit. So I think I kind of gave one more point to the East Valley ride choice versus the West Valley ride choice. Now that's just one point out of um, 
the number of scores being, you know, eight versus seven. But I think that's where I maybe gave one more point to the East Valley ride choice over the West Valley ride choice. Cause I did score both of them. Cause I don't have any skin in either of those games. All right. Vice chair. Is there something that you want me to do on screen? No, I, I just do it um, really quick. Yeah. If you could just go, go back and look at that. Um, what we were talking about that, that nine and four point things, just make sure that the, the that nine is truly a four versus in case a, a number nine somehow got in there that would kind of um, skew the scores on the individual ranking sheets or, or how it kind of went in there. I don't know the process that you made because I know the, the one that I sent over, I think may have had that nine in there, but um, um, unless that you, you changed it to a four. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm checking them right now. And uh, Ray, one more, one more. they are all four. So there is not a nine on that. And it's easy for me to check that because on my um, um, spreadsheet, it doesn't give me an error. It pops up in red telling me that it's more than five because five was the maximum for that one. So it's Got easy it. for me to check. And yeah, no, there is nothing. I, ju okay. I just checked every single one of the eight spreadsheets. All right. Thank you, sir. Chair, members of the committee, um, if there are not any other comments, um, Chair, we could move to the CRISA and American Rescue Plan funding, but we are still open for any comments. Are there additional comments? So the CRISA has us to move forward um, based on ranking and the method utilized. Let me make sure. Is there a consensus to move forward with the allocation? Chair Dee, before the, before that, I just wanted to make the quick point that these, because there was more than a uh, hundred percent of the funding request, uh, we opted to leave this at the 50-50 match. So these these are not being uh, utilized at a hundred percent. But yes, I have consensus. <laughs> yeah, you got con consensus from, from me. Consensus from Joan Freeman. Consensus from Carolyn Ballard. Consensus from David Calloway. Consensus here, Nate. Surprisingly, from from surprise. Did we miss anybody? So we have consensus then, right? We do have consensus. Okay. Next. Next, we'd like to, uh, we will review the CRISA and the American Rescue Plan um, allocations. As um, Wendy had noted, um, we were able to pull in the CRISA apportionments for this year's application process. And I think it was a little over a month ago, or we did receive notice that the American Rescue, um, that we have apportionments under the Ameri American Rescue Plan. Um, at approximately, they were both at approximately five, uh, 595. Um, so as a case, could you pull up that scenario, the funding scenario? Um, so we did integrate the CRISA and American Rescue Plan funding amounts into um, the analysis of, of awarding. Uh, and the committee at the previous meeting had um, suggested to Max staff to bring up some scenarios regarding funding the the um, the CRISA and ARP funding amounts. 
So uh, before you, we have the ranking, I'll review first, and then we can go over the two funding scenarios. So um, at the ranking, at the first was Chandler Gilbert Arc. Um, Civitan came in next, Excel, then it was Beatitudes, Campus, then the Opportunity Tree, next was Benavia, Treasure House, then Locos Valley Connect, we have One Step Beyond, we have Gumpers, we have Savi, and Hacienda. And again, we do have approximately 1.19 available in both the combination CRISA and American Rescue Fund funding. We did receive over $4.1 million in request. Uh, before you today is the two funding scenarios. The, fund, the first funding scenario is taking uh, based on based on the ranking, we were uh, we did the 125 pass through and, and went from there. The second scenario um, before you is utilizing the operating methodology that the committee had um, approved and doing the 125 or, or based on percentage of ranking, whichever comes first. Um, so before you are the two funding scenarios for um, the CRISA ARP. And as a key, do you have any other information? <laughs> um, no, Didi, I think you covered okay. pretty well. It's just okay. the only the only difference is that the first one does not consider the scores themselves, just the ranking position. The second one will do the same thing that we just discussed for the operating and make the passes according to the score percentages. Okay, and as you can see um, with the first um, pass through, it, it does provide funding for all of the requested, um, for the all of the request, um, agency requests um, that, that also are um, scored at above 70. The second um, funding scenario it doesn't buy award. Uh, where, where does the cutoff on the second scenario? Okay, um, the, the cutoff on the second scenario would come in at Gompers. So one step beyond would be um, the last award for this funding, funding um, scenario. So um, we want to provide this for the committee's discussion on funding scenarios for the CRISA and American Rescue Plan. Thank you. Didi Hezekias, I just wanted to say thank, this is Wendy Miller. I just wanted to say thank you for um, me not having to do this this year. It was so <laughs> nice to have someone else put together the funding scenarios. So I gladly hand my hat over. <laughs> so thank you, thank you. you guys did a wonderful job. Um, the second thing I wanted to mention is that these are 100% funds. They're intended to be 100% funds. So um, there's no match in these. And uh, secondly, I just wanted to let everybody know that even though we're combining it in the process, the funding sources are different. The grant applications will be different. And there might be one agency if the cutoff doesn't happen to the penny that they might have to receive two different grants and two different agreements for two different funding sources so it's just kind of the nature of the beast but I, again transparency um, they are two separate grants so there will be um, different um, agreements with the city on these and lastly um, my comments on the uh, the options, I much prefer a similar, um, since we worked so hard on that methodology, doing it and paying attention to the scores, I like going in the score times the uh, percentage rather than just the standard uh, 125 pass through. I think it gives uh, credence to those that scored higher. Chair, yeah, this is the vice chair. No, I agree on the percentage. I think maybe the only thing that I would might have a question on is that $125,000 number, because I know that is more based on 
our operational allocation on an average. Um, but I know we do have that big ask of 2.3 million there from, from Gompers. Maybe an alternative, and I don't know what that average is going to be, but maybe we um, threw out the highest and the lowest. So the 2.3 million and uh, what would be the next lowest? The 26, 449 from Chandler Gilbert Arc. And then see maybe what the average is of the remaining. And then maybe use that as the baseline um, pass um, allocation. Maybe it's closer to 125,000, but I would just kind of be curious if you take out the high and the low, what's gonna be that average ask of the remaining amount requested? And then maybe use that as the baseline and then take that number times the per um, percentage for each one and use that instead of the 125,000. But again, 125,000 is um, pretty easy to use, but I just know that that 125,000 is the number that we use on the operating side. And this is probably just a one shot deal for Chris. So I was thinking maybe we just average it out, throw out the lowest and the highest, and then use the average amount as that number. But that might be overthinking it. The average but is 172,000. 172,000? Without the high and the low? Without Chandler Gilbert Arc and uh, um, Gumpers, yes. That's also considering that um, the 823,000 uh, request from One Step Beyond. Oh, look at that, yeah. Now that's true, One Step Beyond kind of throws that in there. Yeah. You know, I think we should follow the same procedure we did in the operating. That that way, uh, it's easier to justify. We're not trying to tweak it every time we think. Uh, since we already voted on on the previous one, maybe we should yeah. stick with it. Here, you, I I agree. These are operating funds, just like traditional fifty three ten operating so we're treating them the exact same because they're all operating requests yeah. i don't think the 125 is that far off some of the requests i mean a lot of them are under that um there's only one two three four there's only four of them am i counting wrong five one, two, five five yeah there's five yeah. that are uh, above it and then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that are below it. So it's actually pretty in the middle of the requests. If you looked yeah. at the mean or median, or you know, if you were a lot bigger of a math geek than me, um, <laughs> which is hard to do, um, I, I, I think we're still with well within the range. So I, I say the 125 is okay for now. And should we have years of Krissa to come? God forbid, I hope oh that isn't boy. the case. I hope not. But, but if we had years of Krissa to make those, those determinations, you know, we could obviously make a change based on historical data. But for now, I think it, it fits. Okay. No, um, I, I agree. I, I definitely like the percentage one. And I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go with the 125,000 and passing in the percentages. This is, uh, hi, this is Nate. Um, I had a quick, strange question. It, it seems though that the folks who asked for the most, even though they scored probably the lowest, uh, I know the, the gompers got cut off, but um, you know, looking at one step, because the one step beyond, because they asked for more money, they got, they, they, they got, lucky i suppose that they didn't maybe they didn't know the arp funds were coming in and they're getting the most out of anybody because they asked it's something just seems strange when i look at these numbers though you know and it's it's like i, I don't know how you prevent that but it just seems like what i wonder if all the other ones knew like oh i should just ask for a, a, a huge amount so i can get more like i i just don't want to incentivize people asking for outrageous numbers on things like this. That's all. There's two that ask for like huge amounts of money. Astronomical number, you're right. But maybe that's a, a thing to solve on the next uh, uh, iteration of Krisa. 
But I think we did. Um, didn't we go into the process though, DD, asking them to say, hey, you know, tell us what your true costs are in terms of what you need? Chair, members of the committee, uh, yes, during our uh, during the application training um, workshop and the one-on-one -on -one technical, um, we did advise to ask uh, to request the amount that is needed under this um, at this program. We did not um, provide a limit, um, and again, it, it it does go back to disparities in the the ask amount, and they are uh, that is based on the agency. Chair, members of the committee to follow up with Didi's comments is that in the technical assistance reviews and in the initial budget reviews, I did dive pretty deep with these agencies and ask some pretty tough questions in terms of, you know, uh, how are you determining, you know, we, we reviewed these at length. Um, you know, some of these agencies obviously are not asking for everything that they lost in revenue. Some people were just conservative in their requests and some people asked for everything, but I don't think there's anything. We did not limit them at all. And some people took that to heart and, and, and asked for everything possible, but I don't think there's anything egregious with the requests if they had these losses it's really the purpose of those funds so um i i think that you know we didn't request and some of these agencies had to make some changes to their budgets in order to uh clarify and make sure that we're getting the right numbers so um i feel pretty confident that that these numbers are good Okay. So Wendy, so these numbers that are actually the amount requested, they've had been checked to make sure that these are transportation eligible requests or else they wouldn't be here for Chris. Vice chair. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Every request here we did a uh, review to make sure that they were eligible requests that they had, you know, the, the detail, I mean, you know, did we, scan their scan their finances no but you know in terms of how we handle all the other applications you know because these were new and because we were you know having to look at these pretty heavily because they're new we 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 dove down pretty hard and tried to make sure that at least you know the numbers that they were presenting were um and 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 we did mention you know that the committee would question the large requests um because that's our job, right? We, we always look at that and go, wow, that's a lot. Um, but, you know, they, a lot of these agencies were hit very hard with COVID and uh, they lost a lot of revenue. If they had to completely shut down their services for quite some time, um, I'm sure it's only a drop in the bucket. And we also did, just as a reminder, dig down and ask the questions about um, if they had the... Um, Triple P funding. I always want to call it a public-private partnership, but it was the the basically the nonprofit payroll version. protection. It was Thank the you. payroll protection program. Thank you. I couldn't remember the name of it. So a lot of these agencies also did get funding through payroll protection, and so they were limited in what they could ask for because they were already getting other sources of federal funds, and the federal government. Um, was adamant to make sure that they were not double dipping. So we went and made everybody go back through and ensure that their requests were not dupl duplicative of what they asked through payroll protection. So I think if some of these agencies hadn't have already received payroll protection, they would have uh, asked for more. So just as a, a reminder that there could be a, a, a difference there as well. Okay. That makes sense to me. All right, so are we looking for consensus on this then? Yes, thank you. Okay. No, you got, uh, you got con consensus from me, the vice chair. Thank you. Uh, Carol Blatt, yeah. 
Sherlin Ballard. Ballard, excuse yeah, me. Cons- long day. <laughs> yeah, my consensus also. <laughs> Thank you. Surprise. Thank you. David Calloway. Yeah, my consensus as well. Joe Freeman. You have my consensus. Wendy Miller. Consensus. Nathan Williams. Consensus as well. Chair Yavis. Consensus. Thank you. Is that it? I believe that's it. Um, Chair Yabes, uh, members of the committee, if, uh, if I may, um, kind of review what the discussion has been. Uh, we will move forward the projects. Uh, we will move projects forward utilizing the priority listing to base the grant awards. Based on apportionments and following the committee's consensus, as noted, do not move forward with the PEARL due to not meeting the 70% uh, cutoff to roll over a traditional funding shortfall to next year, adding a place of holder um, to award traditional capital at 100% um, that MAG and the City of Phoenix will work to confirm awarding amounts that the traditional capital is being um, at 60% to ensure that we meet the 55% federal requirement and that the CRISA funding apportionments will follow the operating mythology of awarding. So the motion today is, is there any questions? Thank you, because I don't think I can repeat that again. Okay, so the motion today is to recommend the priority listing of applica- applications for the fiscal year 2021 section 5310 and has mobility of seniors and individuals with disabilities program for the Phoenix Mesa urbanized area and the CRISA American Rescue Plan projects for approval by to move forward through the MAG committee process for approval by the MAG Regional Council to forward to the City of Phoenix Public Transit Department to submit to the Federal Transit Administration. Chair Yabez, members of the committee, that is the motion. Chair Yabez, this is Vice Chair Dudley. So moved on that statement. Second from anybody? Joan Freeman seconds. Dini, please do a roll call. Chair Yabez, members of the committee. Carolyn Bellard. Aye. Yay or nay? David Calloway. Yay. Um, Matt, uh, Chair Daly made the motion. Joan Freeman seconded. Um, Wendy Miller. Yay. Kristen Taylor. Yay. Nathan Williams. Yay. Chair Yabez. Yay. Motion passes unanimously. Yes, Chair Yabez. Thank you. I can't find my agenda. <laughs> do we have any more business to do? I think we do, right? Oh, yes, we have, I believe, three other items. Overview of the updated mug response to COVID-19 webpage, right? That's that is item, correct. Item yeah. seven. There have been right requests here. from members of the public who are looking for information on vaccination. DD will present on Mike's updated COVID webpage for information. Thank you, Chair Yabez and members of the committee. I, I will provide a brief um, overview of the updated MAG response to COVID-19 webpage. Um, a, a, couple of year, uh, a couple of months ago, not years ago, um, we uh, MAG was contacted from some of our member agencies and stakeholders regarding comments they received regarding COVID-19 vaccination and and transportation, and I believe Town of Gilbert was well, part of that discussion. Um, and during our discussion, and, and uh, we just what we determined really was the comment um, from the uh, the community was that they were not asking 
per se questions regarding transportation, but the majority of the questions were on where to find information regarding vaccinations. And during that discussion, you know, there were only at that point two sites where you could get, you know, for the public uh, to get your vaccination. And that was at um, Grand Canyon University and the um, Municipal Stadium. Um, uh, upon further discussion, we determined that there was uh, different towns and cities actually doing their own programs and trying to set up um, um, other pop-up sites for vaccination. Um, so instead of trying to recreate something that is, there's general information out there already, um, Max, uh, we, you know, volunteered ourselves <laughs> to take a look at uh, what we have, uh, what resources we had already. And what I found out was that we do have a, a COVID-19 resource page on our MAG website. Uh, as a case, that we can pull that up. So we thought this might be a better way to provide information to the public instead of, you know, especially uh, for individuals who only think those are the two areas to get vaccinations, you know, instead of having a, a a city of Tempe uh, resident, you know, try to find transportation to Glendale to get to the, um, their site. Uh, we could provide information about what is happening in the city of Phoenix. And so um, with a suggestion and looking at um, all the information and resources out there, MAG has updated their COVID-19 resource webpage. Um, and is also, if you go out to the general MAG, website is one of the banners that you can click on and it'll take you right to this web page. So here we pulled all the information that is uh, that we knew of. Um, I pulled it together on one web page that will make it easier for our community members to get the information they need, um, such as the CDC vaccine finder, Maricopa County vac vaccine location. Um, there is a department of um, Department of Health Services. So we went from the national, the state, and then to the local resources. To the left of our website, we have your jurisdiction, the cities and towns, um, and their information. If you could click on the town of um, Tempe uh, for their website. So when you click on the individual links, it goes directly to your member um, to uh, your city's, your representative's um, website, web page, so that, you know, as your city is continuing to update your information, this will go ex directly to your city's web page and it will provide that up to date information to those community, uh, to those community members. Um, and as you can see, it has an example, Tempe. Um, we want to ensure that we're making sure that we pull any other resources that we hear uh, and provide that link on this web page. So we just wanted to make sure that we are um, addressing the needs of the of our community. And as you noted, um, throughout throughout all of our interviews, you know, our nonprofit agencies, our cities and towns. Uh, they're all working together to provide those resources and get those that information regarding vaccinations to our, our consumers. And especially for those that are underserved, um, those individuals um, that are older adults and persons with disability. Um, just recently, a couple of weeks ago, Ability360 had a pop-up site specifically to for individuals with dis disabilities. And we're and has you Heard throughout the interviews, um, more and more nonprofit agencies are having pop up sites to kind of uh, close that gaps of those, uh, the vaccine resources to those underserved populations. Um, again, I just wanted to share this information with you. Please share the website if you have any, um, any uh, questions from the public. And as you can see, it's on our homepage. Um, on the major on our Mac website, um, if you would like to refer, you know those questions to me, I would be more than happy to take it. But we just wanted to share this information for you so that you can serve your community members. That concludes my presentation. Are there any questions? Are there any comments? 
uh, chair, this is the vice chair. No, Wendy, uh, this looks very good, Dee Dee. Um, and I know most of our mobility managers, some of them kind of alluded it to, and since we are the 5310 committee, um, trying to serve, you know, uh, some of the most vulnerable um, out there is maybe seeing what our mobility managers can do. I know transportation is a, a big issue trying to get to some of these COVID sites and just maybe sitting down working with our mobility managers, especially for our smaller nonprofits that may not have the transportation resources and to see if there's the ability for for some of their residents to maybe use some of the, the vehicles, the mag vehicles that are out there to get to some of these vaccine sites. But yeah, I think this is a great site though. Uh, Vice Chair, um, Chair, members of the committee, um, th thank you for that comment. And when we had our initial discussion with the stakeholders, um, the utilization of 5310 vehicles came into discussion. We also had a representative from Valley Metro and um, because they, um, because of the nature of the vaccination site at that time where they weren't taking up walk-in uh, consumers, um, there was a little difficulty in utilizing 5310 or you know, public transit um, because they didn't have uh, access to, um, to walk-in you know, individuals. Uh, somebody would have to go there and drive with them and sit in the line and then get that vaccination. A lot of our nonprofit volunteer agencies were kind of filling in that gap. But again, um, the vaccination, we weren't vaccinating. And, and as you noted through the interviews with the volunteer programs, they didn't have enough um, volunteers to provide those trips. So um, we, we have been talking, thank you, uh, Vice Chair, uh, we have been talking and strategizing with our sub regional, regional mobility managers um, about how we can get, you know, first the information out to the public and then access to those vaccination sites. And one of the things is, you know, looking at the pop-up site instead of, you know, the consumers, you know, going to where the consumers are. And um, now, information regarding vaccination sites are changing almost weekly. Um, we are keeping that in part of our discussion and we are gonna continue uh, that discussion regarding um, COVID-19 as agencies reopen their program. Um, but we have been talking about not only getting our, our consumers vaccinated, but also getting staff vaccinated too. So thank you. Now that's, that's great to hear and especially as um... I think the number of requests for vaccines are um, are going down as more people. I, th I think that vaccine availability is there. So maybe even, yeah, if, if there's pop-up events at some of these nonprofits, maybe some of our mobility managers or some of these bigger agencies, and then they can try to coordinate to get some of those um, residents to do that. I, I think that would be a great, great idea. Yeah, what I know is that the Ability360 has had it and all the three mobility managers that we have, they have already had the pop-up sites in their own um, organizations as well. So um, it, it's being more widespread throughout, through the organizations, the availability through FEMA and other um, agencies to get those pop-up sites. Great, good to hear. Okay. Chair members, of, I, I just have... I have one additional comment. Hopefully it is not, it's a little commentary. Um, I would like to thank Ezekias for volunteering. As we know, um, as we're going you know, further along uh, with the vaccination, the volunteer rate is dropping. Um, so I would encourage any, you know, that you get the information now uh, that the more volunteers we have, the more, um, appointments and spots that will open up. And it seems like the underserved, the older adults and persons with disabilities are the population that are really getting the appointments. So well, now it's open, I believe I, I heard this morning, um, but are, are not making, um, getting their first round of vaccinations. So volunteer is great. That concludes my presentation. Thank you, Didi. Oh, request for future agenda items. What is the next meeting anyway? Or do we have a scheduled meeting next? 
Mr. Yalvez, members of the committee, that is a really great question. And um, normally we have our next meeting in August uh, to review and debrief. And, you know, committee members had requested that we have it pretty close to the close of this. Um, I just want to uh, add that we are, at, we are at the end of the extended year for the FAST Act and that a new legislative act will be may hopefully be coming on board, which would probably be in October. And I just wanted to put uh, to the committee, if you would, um, if you would like to schedule the next committee meeting in October, when we get more information on whether the Tax Act will be, you know, extended another year, or if they will have another act on, on the table. Okay. Chair Didi, this is Wendy. I think October would be lovely because um, there we, we've we've done so much with the tweaks on this uh, process I think that you know there's not as much uh, you know we can evaluate Krissa and ARP probably better by then that's when we'll, we will have been filing our applications and all of that so if there's any changes that we would like to make if we do get additional funding like that, um, it would be better uh, discussed then than in August. I agree. Works for me. I can make that request for an October meeting. Any Can you make that request, Matt? <laughs> yes, let's let's make that request. No, the current chair has to do that now. <laughs> <laughs> the current chair is retiring, dude. <laughs> That's what it means. When does the transition of power take place? July 1st. Oh. Well, let's have a June 30th meeting. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I had to find a replacement for me, too. <laughs> Chair, members of the committee, do we have any other requests for uh, agenda items? Yes, we do. not Do we have any more requests for uh, additional agenda items? No, thank you, Chair Yabes, for doing such a wonderful job this year. We appreciate you. Yes, thank you. Time for retirement, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> just just retirement from uh, being the chair, not from the committee or from the city of Tempe. Uh, it is both, all of the above. <laughs> uh, I've been here too long. We have Thank two you, more Wendy. items. I appreciate it, Wendy. I appreciate everybody. Too bad we can't see each other. But yeah, thank you for everything. You guys are wonderful people. And I appreciate all the support that you've given me during the last two years, four years, maybe. And thank you. Yeah, great job, Robert. I mean, this um, nobody saw this coming. But uh, yeah, w with COVID-19 and going to uh, virtual, um, you did a fantastic job because we were all just kind of winging it, but I, I think this turned out pretty well and we'll, we'll see how this kind of maybe works for next year. Even maybe if we get out of COVID and maybe just doing the, the virtual meetings um, like we did this year um, for the interviews, that, that might be an easier way to, of doing things. So I think we should look at that um, going into next year. Maybe the committee can meet as a whole that way. Uh, Matt can get us some lunch, but we can have the, uh, <laughs> We can have the, the virtual interviews if we so want to. I think that's a great idea. I mean, it, it worked out really well this time. Chair, members of the committee, due to the far vast reach that this funding goes for, absolutely let these people call in and do a webinar. <laughs> and with all due respect, I love Mag's pot belly sandwiches, but I can buy my own lunch. I want to work from home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next year, no pot belly sandwiches. All right. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. I love the cookies. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. I think the last item on the agenda is adjournment. Um, Chair Yabas, members of the committee, uh, uh, before we move on to adjournment, I would just like to add um, our thank you to the chair during this time um, and, and the committee. Um, we've had to really move fast on our committee environment and moving forward with the interviews. Um, I, I've said this before, we are one of the first MAC committees to move forward with a virtual um, meeting back in March. And so that was a great big learning curve for all of us. Um, but I would like to thank the support of this committee and the support of the chair and working with Mac staff uh, through this process. And, and we were able to roll out 5310 funding for 2020 and 2021. So thank you so much. And as you, again, as I noted, through the uh, interviews today um, that our, our agencies are on the front lines providing these services. So thank you so much for your support. And great job from you guys. I mean, yeah, Dee Dee, Wendy Hezekias, wow. Um, you guys, yeah. every year when I think it's been fantastic, you, you, it's better the next year. So, wow, good job. I mean, we, over the last couple of years, it, it's taken a while to kind of get into the, this process, but uh, every year you guys amaze me on the stuff you do on the 5310 side. Um, Wendy, you on the, as the Phoenix, as the designated recipient, uh, great job. Same thing with Dee Dee and Hezekiah's. Great job. Yeah, it's been it's been wonderful. You know, what, what, I think I've been here with the committee for eight years or maybe a little bit more too. And there's always progression every year. The last two years, the last four years, we have grown leaps and bounds as a committee. And thanks to staff, Dee Dee, Hezekiah, and Wendy. Or moving it along for the better. Thank you. Hey, Matt. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> hey, you hey, know yeah. what? Next, ne next year is my, I think, my 20th year on this committee. So I think I'll be chair. This will be the chair for the third time. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but uh, le leaps and bounds from 20 years ago. Yeah, when I, I remember a, when I was a staff much? member for the city of Mesa. <laughs> yeah, I think you were. Yeah, I, I have been here much longer than eight years, I think, actually. So that's crazy. And good luck on that vice chair. Are you still here? Oh, um, we thank you, chair and members of the committee. We did have a letter of request. That letter of request uh, of interest for vice chair will go before. Um, the MAG Executive Committee next month, and we should have an approval by MAG Regional Council in June. Thank you. Well, time to adjourn, ladies and gentlemen. Good luck. Have fun. You have two, three hours left of the day. Hopefully, we'll see you soon in person. It's, it's raining at my house right now, and with that, oh. I will make the motion to adjourn so I can go play in it. <laughs> Oh, God. Thank you, Wendy. I will, I will second that motion. <laughs> yeah, I <did>. thank you <laughs> for the Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a thank good day, bye. everyone. Stay safe out there. Bye bye. Bye. Jeremy, thank you so much. Yes, thank you, Jeremy and Tina. And yes. Tina as well. Yes, thank Love you. writing now, Tina. Thank you so oh much. Oh my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> I stop recording. Yes, let's do that.